All right, hi everyone. Uh, thank you for having me today and thank you for coming to the panel. I'm always uh, I'm a big cheer cheerleader of everything the Vector Institute does and is doing, so I'm always happy to uh, be here for these events, especially today. Uh, very near and dear to my heart as someone who actually works in consulting now after having been in your shoes as a Vector Institute student before. Um, so Adam's already introduced me, I won't go too much into this. Uh, yeah, shout out to Queens. I've also been to UBC, but they're not on this call because they're obviously not in Ontario, but shout out to them too, uh, to the university, all that matters. Uh, yeah, so I have a bit of a varied background. I didn't come straight into consulting right away. I've done, you know, academic research in a cancer center. I've been through the whole you know, publishing thing that you, many of you have to go through as part of your master's degree requirements. Um, I worked for a startup briefly, uh, which had very few employees and I work for KPMG, which is a huge company. So I've kind of been on both ends of the spectrum as well. I've been with KPMG for between one and a half and two years now. Um, and I'm gonna talk a bit today about uh, so the type of work that my team Lighthouse does at KPMG. Uh, as well as just my own personal motivations for why I chose to do this. All right, so KPMG Lighthouse, what is Lighthouse? Hey, Lighthouse is what we call our center of excellence for data and analytics, a KPMG. Uh, so we're using data analytics, artificial intelligence to build and deliver solutions that transform the business of our clients. Um, very much echoing what Stephanie just said from her presentation with EY. At the end of the day, we have to make sure we're aligned with whatever businesses are able to do and want to do and are strategically aligned to do or else we're not going to stay in business. And if we're not in business, then we can't do cool AI projects. So that does have to come first. Um, but yes, we are all over analytics and AI. I'm not going to go through all the words on this slide. Um, what's really neat about KPMG's Lighthouse approach. So Lighthouse is actually part of, uh, it's KPMG International. So I'm a consultant with KPMG Canada. I work in Toronto. Um, but as a part of KPMG Lighthouse, I'm connected to a global set of uh, professionals. Um, so this is saying we have 1,700 data scientists around the world in lighthouses all across, uh, all across well, basically every continent. So even though my team in Toronto is small-ish, uh, there's, there's a lighthouse in Vancouver, there's a lighthouse in Toronto, there's going to be a lighthouse soon in Montreal. They're already doing the work, they just haven't called themselves a lighthouse yet because lighthouse is a hard word to translate to French, <laughs> but otherwise uh, the work is happening. Um, but even though there's only a few lighthouses in Canada, there's a ton of lighthouses everywhere. I've done a project with the New York team before, I've done a project with colleagues in Denver, uh, I've been on calls with people in Europe and South Africa and Japan before. Um, so we're always going forward to, with, with the best of not just KPMG Canada, but Lighthouse as a whole planet uh, to our clients. Um, so what is our scope? So, you know, data and analytics is our bread and butter. Um, but anytime we're doing any kind of automation, we, you know, yes, there's lots of math and machine learning and stuff to think about and just, you know, software engineering, computer science stuff when it comes to automation. But uh, we also have to do this intelligently. We can't just automate stuff for the sake of automating stuff. So yes, we're experts when it comes to the technical details of our solutions, but we are also people who can consult and advise businesses on, for example, the ethics of what they're doing. Um, if they want to do an ethics assessment before they actually move forward to do a machine learning solution. So when I first joined the firm, to be honest, you know, I, I'd come out of the Spectre AI program and I saw the firm saying, oh, we do AI and IA. And I kind of thought that was, you know, I didn't buy it at first, but now that I've been here for a while, I actually completely have uh, drunk the Kool-Aid, so to speak, but it's really important to be doing our work. Um, you know, asking why first before we do anything. So intelligent automation is definitely not just uh, not just another thing, so to speak. And we're also always keeping an eye on what's, what's next. I'm on a monthly call for quantum computing where everyone in our firm with a physics background kind of gets together and talks about quantum computing. Not just Canada, that's the Lighthouse International team. We're also keeping an eye on Internet of Things, 5G, blockchain. Uh, KPMG is able to deliver solutions with all the major cloud providers. Um, we have alliances with Amazon, Google, and Microsoft. Microsoft is by far our biggest one. We have a big, huge alliance. It's a global alliance as well with Microsoft. But, you know, if our clients come to us and they want to use Amazon and Google, we're more than happy to help them there as well, um, as well as any of the other partners that we work with. So I'm going to talk more about the actual projects that my team has done. Um, 
so here's a couple of examples. We've done HR analytics, which has been involving helping organizations understand uh, the people moving through their organizations. Um, we have retail projects where we've helped uh, understand consumer preferences and inventory management. We've had We've done a lot of work recently, actually, in the deal advisory with the deal advisory team at KPMG. Uh, there's a lot of interest for using analytics and artificial intelligence when it comes to mergers and acquisitions, not just for predicting them, but also helping the clients get through the merger and acquisition. There's lots of ways to improve processes um, that traditional uh, professionals in deal advisory haven't really thought about until recently. So there's lots of value for us to add there. And banking, of course, uh, every consulting firm loves working with the banks. Um, we've basically done everything you can think of with the banks. And this, this particular example is uh, to talking about clustering as an unsupervised learning project. Uh, I'd like to show this an, another example. So this was an AI, but it's still a very data heavy project. This one was about uh, managing an asset inventory schedule. So they, this energy company had a lot of assets that needed to be inspected based on the regulators on a, some are on an annual basis, some are biannual, some are once every few years. Um, so by using a very you know, data-driven uh, analytics approach, we were able to save them a lot of money just by helping them understand the most optimal way to schedule all of their uh, uh, maintenance visits. I'd like to throw this slide in to prove, uh, you know, these presentations have to be very high level sometimes. Uh, 10 minutes is enough time to get too deep, but I just like to prove here that we do <laughs> do math, we know what we're talking about. Um, again, I know this is not an AI project that I'm showing you, but we do get very deep in the weeds of the technical solutions that we build uh, for all of our projects. Uh, LIBOR, um, this is a project that I worked on with the New York team. Um, it's something that KPMG is doing all over the world. LIBOR is an interest rate that's going extinct. So I have this copy of The Economist that I got in the mail and they have a calendar for what they think is gonna happen in 2021. And the last thing in the calendar on December 31st of this year is LIBOR, blah, 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 is published for the last time at the end of this year. And there's trillions of dollars tied to it. So every large financial service is having to figure out how to move on from LIBOR. They have tens of thousands of contracts. Um, so this is a really great data engineering problem. And every financial institution kind of has to do it right now because LIBOR is ex going extinct this year. So we... We, uh, on this project, went through with our cognitive contract management tool. So it was a mix of NLP and also just some straight up data engineering um, that was able to go through contracts and figure out how we're going to move them forward. That's working alongside data scientists, engineers, but also lawyers and accountants. It was very much a multidisciplinary project, which is why I really liked it. Um, we've worked with the city of Amsterdam to do an ethics assessment. This is just one place where we've done it. Um, um, uh, often the ethics and AI uh, products that we do are highly confidential, but this is one that's uh, publicly available, which is why I'm going to the other side of the world for it. But we do do ethics assessments all the time for our clients. So, well, I'm sure we'll talk about this in the panel after I'm running up on my time here. So why, why consulting and not something else? So first of all, I find it's very fast paced work compared to other industries. And I've also heard this from colleagues of mine who've left consulting to go elsewhere. Um, you know, there's no such thing as a project of a consulting firm that kind of goes on the back burner for three years. If it's coming to us, because someone's paying for us to finish it and do it and it has to be done well and quickly. Um, and Bryden mentioned that earlier in his presentation about sometimes the time windows are not as long as you would like. That's just part of the job, but it keeps things moving quickly. Um, uh, you're always learning new things. With every new project, you have to learn all kinds of new stuff. And it, frankly, it never gets boring. Projects tend to be pretty short. So if a product does get boring, at least it'll be over soon. Um, again, we're always rooted in the business value. You can see in dollars and cents exactly the impact that you're having on a business in this type of work. And the people I've worked, you know, I've only been at the firm for about a year and a half, but I think I've worked with like 70 or 80 or 90 different people on projects now, if not more. It's just been awesome to get to work with so many smart people and people who like working, uh, working on technical projects and share the same kind of passion that we all have. Uh, towards this industry. So it's just been a really great uh, fit for me. Um, I can make a cons list as well, but I'm trying to sell it to you here. Uh, but I'm sure we'll talk about that after. It's not, I'm not going to try and say it's for everyone, but it's absolutely for me. And I hope that many of you will agree. I'm, I'm, I look forward to talking about this more uh, in the question and answers afterwards.